I am a designer and developer based in Southern New York. And before I actually talk about open source, I first want to introduce some of the projects that I have done so far and some of the thought that I have as a designer and developer. Um, let me switch to the presentation image. So, um, I think, I personally think the code and design is all about the language. You know, like when you think about the code, whatever the JavaScript or like a Java or um, Python or Object C, C++, it's all about the coding language, computer language, in order to communicate with the computer or the machine. So there is a message that user want to send, and they use the computer language to communicate and let the computer to do what they want to do. On the other hand, design, graphic design, which is sometimes called as a visual communication, is a, like a language in order to communicate using the visual symbols or visual message in order to like enhance some part of the message or you know like communicate more efficiently. So I I personally think that um, both are the language, so they have like a very strong similarity between them. So when you are doing Develop, when you're developing something or when you're designing something, you have to more focus on the message inside rather than, you know, like a, like a general process, designer make a visual design and send it to the developer and developer, like just translate into the code. In that process, the message inside is just fade out. So like my practice is about like focusing on the message inside and just melting down all those developing and designing process into the message. So I'm just focusing on the message and the way to visualize or communicate that message can be a code, can be a visual, can be whatever, like a graphic design or like developing process. What's my focus? So for example, I wanna show some of the project that I've done. It's a bit small, but so this is a website that I've done with um, Lima, which is the Media Art Net Art Museum based in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And though I made a website for their archive, and their focus was like making a website that they, that archives all the exhibition that they have done so far. But their focus can be like an archive of the exhibition, but at the same time, they want to talk about the behind story of their exhibition. For example, like why they choose this artist, why, they, why did they do this exhibition, etc. So the information was like, there is an archive of the exhibition, but at the same time, there is a behind story of that archive. So I made a website, which you can actually rotate the website, so see the behind story of it. So the front side works as a general website, but you can rotate it and read the behind story of it. Um, this is the sitemap of that website. So sitemap can be slightly different based on the information inside there. And it's a mobile view. And also, since it's about the net art exhibition, which is usually using projector in order to like show the image and the website of them, so I made an image gallery as if they are projected on the wall. So they are slightly distorted, but like you can get the contact. What was the And it's a website for it's a website for the workshop in Seoul. And the contents is about like dance building and density of the Seoul and so people like these these busy Seoul people and etc. So I made a website. It works like a general website, but at the same time the like um, 
the front page of the website, you can scroll and as if uh, as you touch and rub your finger, you can see like a like a buildings pops out as if they the soul, like represent the soul, and at the same time it works like a general website as well. Uh, and for example, if Yeah, this is the project that I did for the Baka Theater. It's a theater based in Gothenburg, Sweden. And if you want to make a website for the Baka Theater theater, then you can imagine the website can be like an like if you not use the mouse for a certain amount of time, it works as like a screensaver and buttons start to move and play the show that they do actually do in their theater. So that's what I'm really focused on. I'm I'm really focused on the message inside, and I convert the code and the visuals in order to show the message itself. So, open source. Um. So from now on, I want to talk about the open source and how I get the idea from the open source code and how I use the open source code in order to like show the thing that I want to show, like develop the stuff that I want to develop. And I think this website can be a good example of that, which is not working right now. But I can actually go inside the website, right? Okay, it works. So I was living in Germany for a while. I worked in a company called Volkswagen, which is a car company in Germany. And my task in there was making a navigation, make designing the map that goes inside the car. And like I was in the design team, so like everyone using Adobe stuff such as you know Illustrator, Photoshop, After Effects, those kind of things. But like I was really felt frustrating when I trying to like design map using Photoshop because like that's not the way that pe actually users actually user interact with the map. Like users drag the map and zooming in, zooming out the map, which cannot be explained through the Photoshop. So I tried to figure some ways out to like make myself easier to develop to to, to design this navigation. That's what that was a very starting point that I started to know about like those all those open street map which is the like map database open source map and database out there and map box and you know like leaflet.js which is the J JavaScript library that 
like like enables you to like use the map interaction such as zooming in, zooming out, you know, like like dragging and etc. those kind of things. And I was really falling in love with Leaflet.js, which is the JavaScript, I, that I mentioned, the JavaScript library. Because like, first of all, it's really well documented. I want to show the image of the website. So this is the Leaflet website, and it's really well documented. You can approach it really easily, and you can control very tiny little part of it, such as do you want to break, when you're breaking, do you want to do you want it to be bouncing or you know how much do you want to zoom in or zoom out? You can control all those tiny details in there. So I was almost falling falling in love with this reflex areas. And um, after I tried to figure more and more about this reflex areas, I figured it out that I actually can change the map inside there and I, I actually drag out the map image and put my own image inside there. And I felt this is very fascinating because like, I, the, the interaction with the map, you know, like zooming in, zooming out, those kind of stuff is very good to overview whatever the image, not only the map, but all the image out there. So I just kept that in mind. And then I got this task, which is the, it's an archive website for the summer school that happening, taking place in Urbino, which is the very small, town place it in Italy and they have like a 10 year history of 10 year history in their summer school so, and every year they take about 20 to 24 students in there and every student do their own project in there and um, have make an output out there which ha which is like um, five five to ten page PDF file so that means there's almost 200 students, like 200 students output as a PDF file in the Google Drive. And I try to make a website that can show all those PDF in a one view so that people can actually go and read the PDF. So this was the output. And there was a, a, a massive, like massive um, documents. So I want to make a website that can overview all those PDF files. So I just use it that refer.js file into this code, into this website. So as if you're working with a map, you can drag and see the overview of the website, or overview of the PDF. And if you click the PDF list, then you can, it's a bit slow, but you can go to the Google Drive and actually read the real PDF. This was how I use it, open source, Leaflet.js into my website. I also use it 3JS, which is a 3D a JavaScript library in order to build this 3D-ish 2D like, graph. And second project. This can be a second project, second example I want to talk about. Um, as a web designer and web developer, it is very important for me to make sure that my website is render, rendered well in all the different environments, such as you know, like mobile, PC, Galaxy, iPhone, I, iPad, or etc. All those different screen ratio and different environments, different browsers, and I'm trying to. And I'm trying to um, find the easiest and safety way to like make that possible. It's it is called responsive web, and I'm pretty sure you all heard about responsive web. It's a thing that developer kind of settle the rules to make the website render well and keep the same design in different devices. And I'm trying to find some uh, what kind of method that they are using in order to make it safe and working in all the different environments, even though I don't really understand what the environment is. 
and I felt really frustrating because like there is no like one strongest way to do this, but there is many different tiny little different methods, and all of them are kind of really different, and it's really hard to tell which one is the better than the others because like, they have like their own characteristic and they they have their own functions. So I feel like there are so many. I can actually use. I I I just wondering which, what is the difference between them and what can what is the strongest point of this. And so I started to use all of these rules. I started to scrap scrap all of these rules, and I made this one single website, and adapted all those different rules in this one single website, and I cut small square out from there, and collected all of them. That's this website. So since they have like a different rule inside there, in certain ratio, it looks like a general website. In that ratio, it looks like a general website, but if you change the screen ratio, it looks like a scatter since they have like a different rules inside there. I sometimes, I sometimes already have the thing that I want to develop and I use the open source in order to up, make it available. For example, this is the website that I did for ORGD, Open Recent Graphic Design Festival that taking place in Seoul every year. And this is the website for last year. So general overview looks like this way. And it's a festival about archiving recent graphic designers and recent graphic design scenes. So I made a website which worked like a general website on the right side, but it captures itself every three seconds. So it captures itself and archives them on the left side. And if you click one of those capture images, it, re it returns to the previous state. So it's literally open reset. In order to make capture available, which I cannot do that at all, I cannot e even imagine how to do that, I use it open source and I get help from it. Open source is amazing. That It just makes me available to do like whatever I imagine. There are so many creative people and there are so many open source that are free to modify and free to make whatever I want to make. Even for this, open, through open source, I can make a website that have like a different inverted gravity. Okay. And since I can use the low code and I can um, see how those people who build the open source have like a, how did, how did I, I can imagine how did they, did they think to make it available, so like I can read the, those people's mind, which is very important for me to get the idea from there. I'm not sure if I've already done this. There's few stuff that I never want to introduce, but didn't. Yeah, this is one of the other case. I use it Gravity Open Source, which is called Metro.js. And this is a Korean typeface one. So I adapted that on over there and make it available. I think that's almost all. So sorry that presentation didn't work well.